All right, starting out from that chamber uh, that we were just showing you, we're gonna chase the right hand rule here. So we're doing this one first, and this keeps going as well. That is really cool. I am really glad the Forest Service did not get to destroy this one. Uh, there's some corks back here, but not, not a lot. Uh, they're picking up some more corks. Looks like we've got a winds right here. See some boards and stuff down there. Compressor line. Keeps running back that way. Nice, nice echo in here. See they made like a little trestle going past the winds here. Um, it's not too deep, but okay. You see how smooth and flat the uh, the rib of the adit is right here. That is a fault, and you can actually see it extending on down the adit there. That's a fault, and often uh, valuable minerals will squeeze up in the gap created by the faults, and so. They, it looks like we're chasing gold back underneath the fault right there. It doesn't surprise me at all that they would do that. I'm just curious how far back that actually runs. But since I don't have scuba gear, I'm not gonna be able to tell you. Uh, okay, there's some quartz just over my head right there. And uh, I'm probably wondering where this goes, and so am I. Okay, looks like we might face out right here. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, totally definite, no question, fault on the left here. And as I was saying about how the, the quartz and valuable minerals will squeeze up between the faults, look what's sitting right there. Huge, just blob of quartz that uh, was pushed up through the gap. That is really cool. I mean, I just, that's Geology 101 right there. And if we come down here, you can see where that quartz meets the vein, or excuse me, meets the fault right there. There's that quartz vein just running up right on the top of it. Very interesting. All right, that's the uh, right-hand drift we just checked out. We're back in that uh, big chamber here. You get your bearings, and now we've got this middle drift to go check out there. And uh, as we observed before, you can already see a bunch of quartz veins here. Nice slab of it right there, actually. And somebody's been gouging it out all through there. Hard to blame them, looks very appealing. Looks like there's something here. But I've actually, when I was saying that, I was seeing this. And you can see they chased uh, quartz up. See that vein up there? Chase it up to there. You can see some of the uh, drill holes there. As they're falling right up. And this is all coated in a flowstone here, which is pretty cool looking. And I'm guessing there's something up here, given all the quartz on the ground here. I see a rope going up as well. Jake! Stoked up, Jake! <laughs> He's our guy that always climbs up the stoves. That's a newer rope. You got this yeah. all day long. Wow. Yeah, that goes way up there, too. Oh, we just tripped down my shirt. Oh, so yeah, it's a little chilly, the water running down our necks here. We got a bunch of water drip on the camera. Hopefully it didn't go in the microphone because that totally messes up the audio. Uh, but that extends a good 50 feet or so up there before uh, either stops or goes a little bit to the right. It's hard to tell. Uh, modern rope here. So obviously somebody was up there. And uh, all kinds of nice looking quartz down here. And as we correctly observed, there's water. Ran down all over the place. The uh, drift keeps going though, which means that we are too. A bit more silky here. See a uh, ventilation pipe right there, some pressure pipe on the right. Pretty decent track 
baptize here. Okay, it goes up in Tennessee, right? <coughs> I just inhaled a bug. Sorry for coughing. Back out of the water, bending around. I see another pile of looks like quartz up here. That should suggest there's something up here. Pretty big pile blocking me out of here. Oh, looks like we're in the rail. Okay, that's actually it looks like a cave. That's that slate crap that I'm always complaining about. You can see it took down the ventilation pipe here. Uh, it's created a dam. That's all this water backed up behind it. Uh, yeah, that wasn't worked. That's just a sketchy ass cave section right there. So, I'll get over this and uh, pick up there. All right, I just made it over that berm of slate crap and uh, entered a very orange tunnel. You'll notice the echo is completely gone, uh, suggesting higher sketch factor. You see, uh, there's a fold right here because it's all flat and it meets this loose stuff. Uh, that's really low, so we're going to be really hunched over getting through there. There's all kinds of rock and debris on the ground. So I think that I'm going to turn the camera off and just focus on walking, and I'll pick up at that bend. Okay, we're making our way through this muck, us back the way we came, and this is the face, I'm happy to report, right there. You can see the uh, metal sheets for the blasting, where they would uh, put those over the track and the uh, compressor pipes and such, so that the, uh, the rock and such coming down wouldn't damage it, but also it makes it a lot easier to uh, scoop out and remove it. But uh, I'll come up here a little ways farther just to show you. Yeah, I'm not lying about that being the face. See? That is indeed the face. We had the echo back too, which is nice. Just that section back there was really bad. Alright, so we're back at that raise, and uh, our buddy Jake's giving it a good faith effort to uh, make his way up there, which uh, is not easy in waders, I assure you, speaking from experience. And. Keeps going? It keeps going. I'm tied off to some timbering up there. Oh. Good timbering? Yeah, as far as I can see, it goes up a long ways. Wow. Uh, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're back in that chamber. We uh, just finished going down that middle drift. Now we've got this one leading off to the right to check out. And uh, still quite curious about this. This windsy looking thing right here. Given how far it looks like it runs under there. Looks like it goes for ways. Uh, definite <coughs> presence of quartz back here. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, of course, through here. This is following that same uh, fault that we went down in the uh, first drift off to the right, off this chamber. Nice and dry back here. Which suggests it might end. Uh, doesn't look like it does yet. Maybe it's around the bend because I see uh, like the blast sheet right there. I would guess that it does. Yeah, face is out right here. This is the face. Yeah. No shadow for us. Yeah, we were hoping this. Uh, Tied into that shaft up above, but no such luck. All right, that's the direction that we uh, just come from, where that chamber was. We're back at that junction where the wheel row was, um, referring to the one going out this way. So let's go see what's back here. I hear a lot of rushing of water. Well, rushing water. It sounds like rushing water, but just echoing off the. Uh, Ridge the attic. All right, I had to protect the camera from the water. And now we're past. Carrying on. 
That's interesting. Just shooting out of there like a garden hose. Huh. Those echoes, the guys went ahead. So, uh, that's what that is. I can actually feel a breeze here. And so, we're wondering if perhaps this connects to the shaft based on the breeze. Uh, little pocket right here. Probably just for guys to get out of the way. See how flat this uh, left rib is? Like another fault. See the compressor line running through here. Another little pocket. Winding our way through. That would suggest that they were either falling in a vein or looking for something. That breeze that we're feeling is very interesting because that really strongly suggests that it connects to the outside world. For those of you not understanding why I'm excited about the breeze back here. Looks like we uh, have a junction here. Is that junction? Yeah, right hand rules. Right hand rule. The rail picks up. Cool. So yeah, just run to the left there. And we're doing the right hand rule this way. I got some rail here. That is cool. But we also have a uh, substantially caved section. This is a new collapse because this PVC goes under it. Uh, interesting. If you didn't hear that, you were saying that the uh, PVC runs under this, so it's a newer collapse. Well, can we get by it? Yeah. Not comfortably, you know, my mental state, but. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's that slaty crap that we really, really hate. That's a massive holder. All right, I was just standing up there a minute ago and shooting from there, and I've gotten over to this uh, shaft here. Uh, and it's definitely a shaft. You can, you can feel the breeze coming down pretty strongly. And then, um, I really hope you can see this on the camera. Um, looking up. All right, I've been trying to get the camera to focus on that spot up there, and it's just not cooperating with me. So, um, as I was saying, the shaft, you can see where it runs up there, the pipes and such are all going up there, and again, the wind is uh, blowing down here pretty strongly. So, that shaft is up there. I just can't show you too easily or too well, unfortunately. Um, in regard to the drift that we're on, it actually keeps running... Uh, back in that way. Hopefully you can see that. It's all flooded back there. But uh, that's just not accessible. Those slabs are too big to uh, push aside and get around. So I'm curious how much farther it runs back that way, but fortunately there's no way of knowing right now. Alright, that's the drift of the shaft that we uh, just checked out. And now we have this one left. It was going off to the left. Uh, see there was track here as well. Very small support timber here, but I guess it was deemed sufficient. Uh, looks like we take a sharp 90 degree turn here, follow the track, and head off this way. Looks like uh, it's more of that fault right there from the look of things. Oh, so we just uh, hit the face. Interesting, doing that sharp 90 degree turn. I wonder what uh, prompted that. That's pretty cool. You don't usually see bends that sharp inside the mine, especially with a rail. I mean, that was a very sharp bend for them to get the ore carts around. Yeah, I mean, I can see where they stopped here. It's like, uh, that's any uh, interesting looking mineralization. Looks like it's all geared out right here. So, uh, that's the extent of what's the flow sun right there. That's the extent of what we can explore, unfortunately. Uh, we'd love to get past that shaft where all that stuff's come down, but I'm afraid that's not going to be possible. The attic we just finished checking out is around the bend there, and as I said, we would, we followed that trail down. 
um, you can see I've got these uh, all these pipes here that led us to believe something was down here as well. Uh, this is all waste rock, quite a lot of it, that uh, obviously came out of that mine, or the attic we just explored. There's a, a good good section of it dropping down there as well. Anyway, the reason I turned the camera on is because following this down, you can see it sort of peers out right there, but looking down the trees here past that barrel, there are the remains of a large structure down there, which we're assuming was likely the mill. So it's not easy to get down there, but we're going to try and figure out a way down and check it out. Okay, I was just looking down from up there and uh, made my way down here and I haven't seen any stamps yet, but this has every indication of being a mill. Um, to start with, you've got these multiple levels. There's a, a level up there. I'm standing on a level here. And then there's a third level down there. Uh, you can see concrete slab right here. You've got those huge beams that you typically see in the mill. And the location makes sense too because all the material coming out of the mine would have come down this way, same level as the mine. Waste rock would have gotten dumped down there, farther back. And they would have just kept going with the good ore, dumped it into the top of the mill right there. And would have been processed down through where I'm standing. And then the uh, tailings would have been dumped into the creek and uh, washed away. So that's pretty cool. I'll look around here a bit more. Uh, if I see something that I think is significant or of interest, I will certainly uh, let you guys know. Uh, actually, as I was saying that, you can see part of a platform that juts out over the creek, uh, which is where I'm sure they dumped the tailings off. Uh, oh, looking, I keep seeing more stuff. I was about to turn the camera off. Looking here, there's a concrete, another big concrete foundation right there which seems like it would have supported the mill and yeah, the heavy mill equipment. All right, I was just up shooting from uh, that level before. I've uh, dropped down to the next level and uh, I assumed that these were tanks based on their appearance from above, but they're actually rollers, as you can see. There as well, that's a roller and um, all kinds of scraps of equipment down here that at this point it's difficult to ascertain their function. All kinds of bits and bobs here as the English would say. Couplings and fasteners and all kinds of stuff. I know this is interesting to uh, some of the industrial archaeologists out there, as well as to uh, machinery enthusiasts and such. So I don't necessarily know what this, uh, these bits are, but I know that some of you will. And uh, it extends back that way a respectable distance. And I can see a little bit of it from above going out toward the creek, but now that I'm down here, I can see that it actually extends out or extended out, I should make that past tense, extended out quite a way. See, uh, oh, God, exactly. that might have gone all the way over the creek even. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, like I said, I'm sure they would have just dumped the, uh, the tailings down into the creek to get washed away because there's no sign of them here. Uh, do you see more of those rollers? I got, uh, let's see, one, two, three next to my foot of those rollers here too. Interesting. Real nice mine in the woods that we definitely underestimated 